Okay, hello guys. Uh, we saw in the last video how to make calculations for strain energy in a particular wire or in a particular spring using the two techniques. One of them was to use the average force times the extension if it, we were talking about the Hooke's law area which was a straight line and then it was just a triangular area or if we had to calculate it for a curve we had to use the trick of drawing the line and making sure this area was similar to that and then assuming that this was a rectangle calculating that part hopefully that all rings a bell from the last video if it doesn't you should watch that one before this one and I said that the continuation was going to be on strain energy per unit volume in a wire or in a material so here we're going to have a look at that strain energy per unit volume okay so in the following wire let's assume that this is a zoom in of a wire and imagine that in this In this wire, uh, which has a cross-sectional area of, let me use a different color so we don't confuse the wire with the labels, uh, cross-sectional area of A, and and um, we apply a force of F like this, and so our letters for this system are going to be as always L for original length A for the cross-sectional area cross-sectional area delta yeah delta L for the extension delta remember it's a triangle L for the extension and let's figure out the the volume because the this whole thing is about finding the strain energy per unit volume right so what's the uh, the unit volume of a cylinder something like this well it's going to be the area times the length of the wire right if that area if that length is l and the area is a then the volume is going to be l times a and if uh, that's a perfect circle then we normally say that the area of a, c of a cylinder is pi r squared times uh, times l right so, but here let's not uh, let's not express it in terms of of phi squared. Let's say in terms of the area and the length. And so, the volume comes out as area. What's delta? Sorry, area times length. Now we can then use the formula we derived last time which was for the strain energy we said that the formula for the strain energy was equal to the work done in stretching the wire and that came out to be in the area or in the in the part of the graph that we're referring to right now is the hooks the hooks behavior which is a straight line this part so not this one this part here and that we said was if this was F the maximum force at the elastic limit, at the, sorry, at the proportionality limit, then the one halfway through would be the average force because this is changing as a straight line, so it's a uh, uh, evenly, uh, you know, homogeneously changing quantity. So half F will be its average, as we talked about in the last video. So, if the strain energy is then the work done, then that was one half of F times the distance that the force is stretching the wire which was the extension so if we want to talk to, uh, today in this video about the strain energy per unit volume then we're talking about um, a very simple step from the one we just take we know that this is the volume so if we want to take the strain energy per unit volume 
there's nothing else to do other than to divide one by the other so uh, strain energy strain energy per unit volume is equal to one half F times delta L I've just read I've just read this divided by AL A A L right and hopefully you can see two two things here that stand out from from this one of them is this guy delta L over L because these fractions are everything multiplying everything else you can't well before yeah before I do this let me just split this up um, oops we just lost uh, we just lost an L times L okay so let's split this formula this fraction up so it's clearer this is all stuff multiplying by each other in a, and then dividing so like this is like saying X times Y times Z divided by uh, P times Q and you have out here this half which could be like an R but in a fraction you always multiply uh, if you multiply a number by a fraction it multiplies only at the top because it's as if it had an invisible one underneath right and the one multiplies at the bottom stays the same and the R multiplies the top so this half up here just multiplies everything else the two would go on the bottom the one would go on top and so what we have here really is this one half times F over A times delta L over L because when you multiply fractions together this all multiplies at the top together and this multiplies and so does this with this and this with that so that you would get uh, F delta L on the top and then 2 A L on the bottom so everything multiplies with everything but I split it up in this way because it's going to be uh, easier to, to understand what happens now so look at this this should ring a big bell F over A I've talked about this a lot of times the force per unit area that's just called Sigma and we call it the stress right and this here you should recognize easily as Epsilon which is the um, strain right and a half is just a half nothing special there so in other words what we've just uh, discovered or um, derived is that for um, a wire being stretched by a force F over an extension delta L we can say that if we want to know the strain energy strain energy per unit per unit volume it is the same thing as saying one half times the stress times the strain which is great news because a lot of times you already have the stress and the strain calculated from early parts of the questions and then they ask you at the end hey what's the what's the strain energy per unit volume and then you can easily say well I just I already calculated these two guys so I'm just multiplying this one by that one by a half and I'll get the right answer and the units for energy as always are gonna be in joules joules are not spelled like that like this okay it's gonna be in joules and in order to get that in joules you need to make sure that sigma is in the appropriate units which is going to be newtons meters to the minus two or newtons per meter squared or pascals they're all the same thing these three and the um, the strain has to be in zero units but for that to happen you need to calculate it as something in meters divided by something in meters right don't calculate the extension in millimeters and then divide by meters because you're going to get a factor of of magnitude out it's going to be meters and meters or you can do it straight in millimeters as long as you put the absolute length at the bottom also in millimeters then these guys cancel and you'll get the right proportion but be careful with in order to get uh, to get joules you need to put in the units here correctly so newtons per meter squared and um, and here no units okay so let's uh, have a look at an example quickly and hopefully um, we'll get to we'll have time for it for the whole example before the end of the video so let's let's have a look here okay so imagine you have here some kind of support and then here you have a steel wire which is everybody knows steel is 
pink and this then would be the original length L but if this stretches then we can draw a little dash line here for the extra length that it's going to acquire and we can call that delta L for the stretching cool let's label this in your diagram this should be labeled steel wire and we have to label one more thing which is going to be our friend the ever-present force uh, in Newtons okay so what are the uh, what wh what are the bits of information they would give us in the in a question like this well they could they can say the original length L is 2.0 meters pay attention to the fact that that's two significant figures the force applied is 50 newtons again two significant figures the radius of the wire so here they're being a bit cheeky they don't give us the area straight away the radius of the wire is 0 0.25 millimeters very thin wire pay attention to the fact that this is also two significant figures and this is in millimeters so that will need a conversion and finally the Young's modulus E they give it to us so they say that it's 2.0 times 10 to the 11 pascals okay or newtons per meter squared same thing the question they give it to us in pascals so they gave they tell us calculate okay they give us an order and they say calculate two points or colon a uh, the extension produced find the extension B find the strain energy strain energy and they don't say strain energy per unit volume they just say strain energy and finally in part C they now say strain energy per unit volume I don't want to write it all because I'm lazy per unit volume and uh, so let's have a look and see if we've got uh, time to solve this hopefully in well we've got three minutes um, but it doesn't matter it can be a little bit longer done 15 that's fine um, so let's go ahead and do this in fact it would be good if um, the teacher who's there right now who hopefully is me will stop the video and give you a five minutes to try to do question a part a to find the extension right so uh, stop it now if you can it's probably my future me there sitting there and I'm just gonna go on and, and, and solve it now um, and hopefully you've paused it and, and started it again so welcome back <laughs> and so we want the the extension so what information do we have they give us a Young's modulus right so that means we can start by writing the equation for the Young's modulus and uh, make sure that we write it properly and that it contains what we're interested in because we want the extension and it doesn't appear explicitly in this formula so we need to write this uh, formula in, in more detail the stress is force over area and the strain is delta L over L and you should know now how to manipulate this algebraically to have it more simple the uh, L which is a fraction over a fraction uh, comes here to the very top with the F and the A comes down to the bottom because it's at the, at the bottom of this fraction here so what you end up doing is you end up having F times L which goes to the very top flips up divided by delta L times A A delta L and so they give us the information for the Young's modulus and the right units and so we have the answer for this we know how much this is it's exactly this right and what else do we have we know the force which is 50 newtons we have the length which is 2 meters the original length we have the area because they give us the radius and we can find that out because it's just going to be pi r squared but be careful to change this into meters before 
and so we have everything we need except what they ask us for which is this uh, delta L so let's do a little bit of math to rearrange all of this so we can find delta L in terms of everything else delta L is down here dividing and we want it over there multiplying so we bring it up by multiplying both sides of the equation by delta L and we end up with delta L times the Young's modulus equals force times length over the area delta L went up there now we're nearly done we just need to move this guy to the other side and we have it here multiplying so it's gonna go to the other side dividing if we divide both sides by E so let's see delta L equals F L over a for the area times E so now we have an equation that we can use because this is what we're looking for and everything else we have so uh, what don't we have yet in uh, very explicit wo uh, form the area so let's find out the area which is pi r squared and the radius they give us in in meters it's gonna be 1000 times smaller right because this is millimeters so that you do by just multiplying by 1000 so 0 0.25 millimeters milli means times 10 to the minus 3 so if that was uh, if you know if this was it in millimeters then this is it in meters and now we can put it into this formula and we can uh, calculate that the well, I'll, I'll I'll let you do all of this uh, calculation with the you know the, uh, the help of a calculator, but you can put this now into here and find the area and do it properly. So square this first and then multiply that by pi. You know, I, I recommend you don't put pi brackets blah 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 close bracket squared. Always do the inside at first and then the outside. It, it, it works safer like that as I'm uh, sure I've said before and so we get for the extension doing it this way the force of 50 newtons that they give us there times the length of 2 meters divided by the area that we get from here and the Young's modulus they give us here which is a pretty huge number we end up with a very small extension I'm sure let me see and it comes out to be zero point twenty five centimeters so it's not that small zero point twenty five centimeters stretch so a quarter of a, so twenty five millimeters is the the uh, extension produced by a force of fifty newtons on a wire that is uh, this thin with that radius okay so hopefully you didn't find that too confusing the algebra needs to be really uh, fluent to be able to do these things uh, otherwise some people what they do is they learn this formula which is already uh, in this form uh, if they don't want to be fiddling with these guys I recommend you 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 find out how, how to how to manipulate algebraically because otherwise you've got to remember more stuff and you're gonna need to know how to manipulate this kind of thing anyway for other parts of the course so the better sooner you learn the better I hope that made sense and so let's have a look at strain energy and uh, strain energy per unit volume Well, the strain energy itself has a very easy formula because we said before strain energy that the formula for the strain energy in the previous video we said it could be expressed as well half times the force times the extension right or the same thing is half times the tension in the in the wire times the extension and here we know the force so we've got this guy and we just calculated the extension so we've got it uh, uh, really easy for the second part and we just save uh, one half times 50 newtons times this and this is in centimeters so you're gonna have to change it in into meters it's gonna be 0 0.25 that would be in centimeters and we do it times 10 to the minus 2 this time instead of 3 because it's centi for 100 two zeros um, in meters and so that's it 25 times that and that comes out really easily in uh, remember the the unit of joules is uh, sorry the unit of energy is joules and so we have 0 0.063 joules for the strain energy and finally they ask us for let me just label this B and now let's do let's do C that's not very visible 
that color let's choose something else that's all right um, strain energy per unit volume strain energy per unit volume just notation I invented right now and the formula for that was the strain energy itself divided by the volume we just calculated up here the strain energy so we just need the volume to be able to find this out and so our formula is going to be 0 0.063 joules divided by the volume and the volume is the area which we found before times the length and the length was 2 meters so if you do that you make sure your units are okay this is in meters squared and this is in meters this is already in joules so that's fine then you're gonna get a strain energy per unit volume of 1.6 times 10 to the 5 and I didn't mention this before but the obvious units for joules uh, for energy per unit volume is strain energy per unit volume is joules per meter cubed right because volume is always in meters cubed and energy per, per unit volume therefore has to be joules over meters cubed alright so uh, that was a bit of a long video but hopefully you saw this in the lesson and uh, in the meantime I, I would have been uh, marking your, your homework and uh, th with this kind of, of thing we can uh, save time I can get more time for more videos and um, will be more efficient uh, in general we'll squeeze more out of our time alright so I hope that helped uh, see you in the next video take care